Hey there, everybody. It's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com. And in this episode, I want to talk about a tough question you may be asking yourself. I get it a lot. And that's whether you should consider going professional, doing photography full time for an income, or if you're also doing photography full time right now as an income, if you should continue it. Is it really worth it? So I am a full time photographer. As you know, I specialize in real estate photography, and I've been doing this for a number of years. And I made that decision. I want to be able to share some of what I learned through those experiences and be able to then give some insight on a few points that might be able to help you decide. And it goes beyond just making a spreadsheet and working the numbers. Now, if you have my book on business techniques for real estate photography, I have a link to that also, by the way, in the description for this video, you know that there's an entire chapter just dedicated to viability thinking, well, running the numbers, should you do this by knowing how to do the right market research, knowing what you could get paid for your area, and then also later in the book on how to do certain types of marketing, how to handle certain aspects of photography, doing real estate photography. And this episode is going to build on that by addressing a few different things that actually will help you understand more about yourself and how you might fit into photography. Now, there's a few points that I want to make here, and it all stems from something you may have heard about before, and if not, I'll cover it here just as a real quick overview, and it starts with Maslow's hierarchy of need. You may have seen Maslow's Pyramid before, and this is where everything needs to build off a of foundation. We need certain things fulfilled before we can really progress through life. If we don't have the bottom layer of our foundation of food, water, sleep, things like that, then we can't move eventually all the way up to the top where we get creativity, spontaneity, problem solving, things that are very important to becoming a professional photographer. So we have to build those lower layers of also safety before we can even find love and actually have true intimacy with other people, friendship and family, if we don't have our own animal instincts, the basics secured. You can think of those layer, lower layers of safety and physiological as things that every uh, animal, every being has an interest in, but then we start moving higher into that. So it's important that we first build those lower layers of Maslow's hierarchy, but we have to think about how thick are our layers. So do we have such what we think are high needs, such thick layers on Maslow's hierarchy and pyramid here that we're holding ourselves back from achieving other goals? So I'm gonna revisit that in just a second. We need to take a look at another theory based off of self-actualization, and this is by Carl Rogers. And he felt that there was two sides to this where you're either incongruent or you can find congruency. Basically what that means is on the left is you are not who you want to be. Who you see yourself is your self image is not your ideal self. You see yourself a certain way now and you're thinking you can be a professional photographer, but there's still a conflict where those things are separate. You're never exploring your potential. You never will be able to self actualize. And this, if it never becomes congruent, will bring anxiety and unhappiness. And this is something to keep an eye on for as you keep keep progressing and trying to become whoever you want to be throughout any career, especially through the arts, is if you're finding anxiety and unhappiness, you might be incongruent. Taking the other side here though, when we are congruent, when we find this congruency, what happens is who we want to be, our ideal self, is who we see ourselves, our self image. In that overlapping area, that's when we start becoming who we wanna be, we're exploring our potential, we're moving away from being a facade, something that we're not, just something that we say that we are, oh, I'm a professional photographer, but you hate it. So that's when you're starting to become self-actualized, and that then, the more that that overlaps, then the more congruency you have, and that's when you're now finding where who you want to be is who you are becoming. And this is so important when it comes to deciding if you want to be or want to stay being a professional photographer.
So the simple concept of self-actualization can go a long ways. It's a constant pursuit throughout your life, but when you first start doing it, you may reach a lot of naysayers, people that will try to convince you that this is not something that you should do. You might be asking on social media groups if you should become a professional photographer, and they'll start saying things like, well, especially real estate, they're all just cheap. You'll never make any money. You'll never go anywhere with it. It's just a, a pain painful thing. You'll work day and night and not get anywhere. But that's not necessarily true. And I would really argue with that. And so one of my big points of this, if you're trying to make a decision of whether to go pro or stay pro, is to don't listen to the naysayers. You have to listen to the people that count. If you want to know if you can be a successful photographer, you should talk to successful photographers. You should get their opinion on what you're doing. You may have hit a few roadblocks along the way that could be holding you back from achieving further up the scale of Maslow's hierarchy of need. You might not be able to achieve self-actualization through congruency if you don't listen to the proper feedback. If you are just listening to people that will just naysay everything, you have to think about, well, for one thing, where is this person coming from? If it's on social media, one thing to bear in mind is that if a person has enough time to sit in Facebook groups every day, then they might not be getting enough work. So something to just bear in mind that yes, if you want feedback, seek the proper source and don't just listen to the naysayers. Revisiting Maslow's hierarchy of need, going back there a little bit, once again, we have to think about how thick are our lower layers of that pyramid. So we have to be able to separate need from what. And this is one of the things that I talk about in the Business Techniques book. When you took a look at viability, you have to think about, well, how much money do I want to make a year? So that can be a hard choice. For instance, many years ago, I was an engineer and I was in tech and those jobs paid very well. I always loved photography, always did photography part-time, but all of a sudden I got so busy, I had to make the leap. I had to make that viability choice. Is it going to be worth it? And would it still make me happy? Well, I could already see by the work that I was doing that it probably would make me very happy doing it. Sure, there are days when I am very frustrated and I go to bed a little bit oh, overwhelmed, but it's still better than what it was when I was working my previous job. When I had had that previous career, I'm a much better person. I feel now that I'm a more self-actualized person and I have a better time with all of my family, with all of my friends. I feel that I'm a better person overall because of that. But once again, it isn't that I just made a decision to, today I'm gonna to become a professional photographer. No, there was a lot of work that went into that. Once again, the things I share in the Business Techniques book of doing viability, doing market research, and then working my way up. If you start any business, whether it's photography, whether it's a fast food restaurant, whether it's a gym, doesn't matter. Your first year, you're going to take a loss. Almost inevitably, there's an investment in what you need to do. So luckily, photography in itself is a fairly low priced investment. So instead of talking about forking out a few hundred thousand dollars to get like into a franchise of a restaurant or start, you know, flipping houses where you're going to need a lot of cash flow and then be turning around mortgages. When it comes to real estate photography, you're talking about just thousands of dollars, maybe tens of thousands of dollars worth of gear as an investment. So these small investments compared to other businesses really can make viability an easy choice, especially since the equipment can be sold. But once again, those are just the numbers. It's a matter of what you do. Will you really love it? And will it satisfy all the layers of your Maslow's hierarchy of needs so that you can achieve happiness, so you can achieve actual self-actualization. As you may recall, at the very top of Maslow's pyramid, self-actualization, that's where creativity comes in. So there's a, a story of evolution of how Cro-Magnon, our, our most recent descendants, of course, that may be changing all the time with scientific discoveries. But one of the reasons why they feel that we actually progressed more than other types of species, human species on the planet at the time, was that Cro-Magnon decided to settle in near the coast. Well, they had a lot of spare time then. The Cro-Magnon got hungry. They went and they 
got fish out of the water, and then they had all day to sit around. Well, that's when they started painting in those caves. That's where the Cro-Magnon origination. But they had more time, and that's where then they became somewhat self-actualized. They started realizing who they were in life. They realized who they were maybe in the universe. They didn't probably have any idea of the things that we know now, how could they? But the fact was is that their minds were not constantly preoccupied with, I gotta hunt, I, I have to protect myself, I have to do all those lower layers on Maslow's hierarchy. Same with you now. If you're on a treadmill constantly running towards some unknown goal, trying to bring in just income, just to pay the bills, you've got, you're overwhelmed with too many other things in life, you will never reach that point of self action actualization where creativity becomes key and any time you're pursuing a career in the arts, creativity is so very important. You have to understand that. So besides just the artistic point of view from it, also being self-actualized knows that what you're doing is making you happy. You're not following the numbers, painting by the numbers. You're not just doing something that somebody else wants you to do, but you achieve those goals. So once again, you have to be able to build those lower layers and know, are you going to be happy with it? A great example is to never give up on the photography that you love. I love to go hiking. I love the beach. So everywhere I go, there is a camera with me. Sometimes it's just my iPhone, but there's always a camera with me. I love taking pictures. I love doing 360s outside on these big hiking trails out here around the area. And this is something you should never give up. No matter what it is you do for, for photography, it helps to sharpen the skills to always be shooting other stuff, but it's so important to do what you love. It'll also help you because self-actualization and building up that pyramid is not a one-way street. It's a constant cycle. It's a constant matter of reflection. And that's why also like uh, Carl Rogers also felt that this was a constant ongoing cycle throughout your life to where you can reflect on what you're doing. Is this making me happy? Am I becoming the person I want to be? Is my self-image actually who I am, who my real self is? So you you have to be reflective at times in shooting photography that you just love, no matter what, even if it's something new you want to try. These are important steps to keep that reflection going so you can continue the journey of self-actualization. Last point on this is that it's okay during your journey of self-actualization to reflect on what you're doing. Is this making me happy? Should I con uh, continue doing this? Are my lower layers of Maslow's hierarchy thin enough or thick enough? Whatever it is that you're doing to reflect back on how you want to progress through your career is to, when it comes to the arts, and most careers in general, is it's not okay to give up. It's okay to take a different path. As they say, sometimes you have to climb to the tallest tree in the forest, not to find your way out, but sometimes to realize you're in the wrong forest. You might be finding through reflection that, for instance, real estate photography might not be your bag. It might not be something that really brings you joy and happiness, but maybe something else is. Something other than just real estate photography, just in real estate itself. Do you want to be uh, maybe a real estate videographer? Do you want to be a real estate editor where you don't have to deal with as many clients, but you could do editing for other photographers, even part-time. It allows you to still sharpen your skills and do other things, or maybe a completely jo different genre altogether. Maybe you want to do more product photography. Maybe you want to do more portrait photography, or maybe you just want to go back to just shooting landscapes and maybe be able to then display your art at galleries. And even though it might not be profitable, even just for some local shows or sidewalk cafes and things like that, it would bring you happiness, it would bring you self-actualization as long as you can maintain those lower layers on Maslow's hierarchy of need, then the rest of it will fall into place. And returning once again to how I open this is that it's viability first. The viability that I talk about in the Business Techniques book is one that is making sure that you can fulfill those lower layers on Maslow's pyramid. Without doing that first, the rest is just an exercise and futility. You need to make sure that you can make enough money. You need to make sure that in your area you can do the work and the rest of it will fall into place. There is no perfect job. There is no perfect career, but one can make you happier than the other. Anyways, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can apply some of this into your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe 
to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.